Charlie, you ready to go? Let's go. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, this is Nate English from EnglishEndurance.com and I went out uh, the other day and I drove up Mount Diablo so that I could create a pre-ride video for you. Uh, I'm just gonna add some comments about you know how the roads are and how to pace it. And I think a lot of those things can also carry over into you know other climbs that you might do, uh, even if it isn't Diablo. And I hope that it helps you to get a little more out of your ride the next time you go up Mount Diablo. Uh, so enjoy. So the climb starts near the Athenian school the actual uphill part starts a little bit after this, but the challenge and a lot of people that time it will time it from the Athenian school because that's kind of a benchmark. Uh, but you go flat for a minute, then you go up over this little roller. It's probably 6% for a couple hundred meters, so you definitely you know start to push a little bit. But right here you get a little bit of recovery. It's downhill for a moment, you go through a couple of turns. So once you actually start going up the climb, you again should have some pretty fresh legs after going right through here. And so right here it kicks up again and it's kind of steep going right through here by the last few houses. And then it's just pretty steady um, all the way up the climb. As you come up on the gate here, um, it's a pretty solid, you know, several percent. It might be 8% for the first couple of minutes of the climb. Um, it undulates a little bit, but it's a pretty steady uphill. So I'll just kind of immediately settle into my target power or perceived effort if I don't have a power meter. Um, I'll give myself several minutes to allow my heart rate to kind of slowly rise and get up to what I would regard to be my target heart rate for the effort. Because if you max out by, you know, just a couple minutes into the climb, it's really going to hurt you later on. There's a few spots like right here where it's actually pretty flat for a moment. So I'll get up to speed and then I'll just kind of soft pedal and keep cruising so that when it kicks up again, right here, for example, I can go a little bit harder where it's steeper because that's going to pick you up a little bit more time. So if I'm going you know, a little bit harder through this steeper bit and then like right here where there's left-hander, I might ease up just a little bit and drop my power by you know five or ten percent. You know it's all hard, but going five or ten percent harder back there and then right here, for example, where it's steeper, it's going to pick you up a little bit of time if you can, you know, comfortably manage your pacing and go a little bit harder sometimes and then go a little bit easier when it is shallower and you pick up some speed. So all through here for the first quarter of the climb from that gate all the way up ahead to the pay station, which is still a couple minutes away on the climb. Um, so you can see the road up ahead there. So all, all of this stretch is you know pretty sustained climbing, and I'll give myself this first quarter of the climb to kind of settle in and feel how I'm doing that day. And I can adjust, uh, I, would, I would recommend adjusting your effort a little bit. So if you feel great that day, you know, go ahead and go for whatever your you know peak power is that you expect for the whole climb. Or if you feel like it's a little bit of work, you know, feel free to adjust downward a little bit in this first section so that you don't pay for it too much later. And even if you do go just a little bit too hard this first quarter of the climb, right through here when you get close to the gate, like through these, through these left-handers, it's pretty flat actually for a moment. Um, there's a little bit of a bump where it's uphill right here uh, and then it's flat again going into the gate. So you can recover a little bit through there. And if you have people to ride with, you can definitely get a draft. Um, so like going right through here, it is uphill, but it's not as steep as much of the rest of the climb. So if you have people to ride with, you can get a draft and you can save some energy. I would, again, you know, keep cruising at a steady pace, but not all out. There's a couple little bumps through here where it's a little bit steeper. So like right here, it's uphill a bit and then it's shallower. Um, and then right here, you drop down, you get a little bit of a recovery. You know, you should keep pedaling, but you can definitely ease up a bunch because especially right here, yeah, going through Rock City um, and past one or two of the, um, the state park buildings on the right here, you get some recovery and that's your last place to get any sustained kind of recovery for your legs. Up here, now it goes pretty steady uphill. 
there's a few slightly steeper switchbacks, so I would again pace it so you can go just a little bit harder on those if you can, and just a little bit easier where shallower, like right here for example, it's probably only 5%, but there's a few switchbacks like up here where it's probably more like 8% or even 10 per moment here or there. Through here, you come up to this parking lot and it's flat for a second here, so that's a nice place to recover for a few seconds. And right here, you set up for this kind of more exposed, slight uphill, and it tends to be a little bit headwindy through there, so that's another place to look for people to ride with. Uh, once you get under the trees here, it's a little bit more steady uphill and you're not going as fast, so drafting doesn't matter as much and you're more protected from the wind. But, you know, just settle into your hard time trial pace, keep it controlled, don't blow yourself up but just keep pushing. You're almost halfway there at this point. And there's the last downhill where you can recover for a few moments right here before you get to the helipad. So on the right, there's a helipad. You get a few seconds of recovery. And then from here, going up this exposed um, you know, hillside, it's a pretty steady, probably 7% or something like that. And it keeps on going through the junction, which is just a few turns ahead here. and past the junction, it's still a pretty steady incline. At this point in the climb, you're pretty much on it all of the rest of the way up the climb. You can't really recover too much because it never lets up on the, on the incline very much. Going through this right-hander, it's actually kind of steep for a second, but it's not a big deal. Through here, it's a pretty steady, maybe 7% or so, um, but it's nice, you get a little bit of shade and it's not too hot a lot of times. Um, coming up ahead, you go through this left-hander that's a little bit exposed, and it's a little bit shallower right up ahead, right here. So you could look for a few moments of easing up and recovering and kind of assessing your sensations, but you really just have to keep, keep on the pressure if you're trying to ride a fast time, uh, whether you're trying to set a PR or what have you. And so you're, you're past the halfway point here, you're coming up on a big open stretch through here, like this whole little you know miniature valley on the hillside is not that steep. So it's good to keep a good pace, pay attention to how you're feeling. This whole section takes a few minutes to ride through, but it sets you up for a couple of steeper sections right before the three quarters mark. So here it's shallow, but then there's maybe five minutes or thereabouts of steeper stuff right here and for the next several turns it's relatively steep so it it helps if you can keep pushing a little bit harder through here and obviously you know you're feeling your fatigue loading up and it just gets progressively harder throughout the whole climb and like right here there's a steep right hand switch back that can feel pretty rough at this point because you're 70 percent of the way through the climb but right here, you make this left-hander and it starts to shallow out. So right through here, it's pretty exposed. You can see some nice views to the left and you're coming up on a parking lot and a gate up ahead. All through here, it's a little bit faster. You can kind of get up to speed, but you don't have to murder yourself to keep a good pace because it is intermittently just a little bit shallower. You make this right-hander, it's actually like almost flat for a moment. But then right here it kicks up and it's, it's a steady probably 7 or 8% for a few minutes. Um, and right through this coming, you know, half a mile or so, you can see the summit and it looks like it might, you know, seem like it's a ways away. And through some of these turns you can see the road several minutes up. So like right there you can see, you know, the next half mile of road. and. It can feel daunting, it can kind of wear on you psychologically because you're tired after having gone up, you know, so much of the climb, you're probably already eight miles in at this point. But don't worry about it, just keep keep pushing, keep paying attention to how you're feeling, try to stay, you know, within yourself, but do realize that you're almost done, so you don't have to keep much in reserve at this point in the climb. Um, through here, you're getting towards Devil's Elbow, and that's just like a steep left-hander. And when you get there, coming up ahead right here, you know that you're almost done. That's a little bit steep through the left-hander, which people call Devil's Elbow. This last few minutes before the wall at the end is a little bit shallower, so you can, you know, 
even if, even though you want to keep going, you're probably tired, you're probably easing up a little bit, that's kind of okay. You only have a few minutes left, so keep on it, but uh, it's not as steep, so it's not gonna penalize you a ton for time. It's just a steady maybe 5%, 6% for much of this part. But right through here, you're setting up, you're getting close. When you see the radio tower on the left, you know that you're almost to the wall. So if you can, take a moment to try to take a few deep breaths, relax, and then through this right-hander, and then it goes left right here, that's it. It's just a few hundred meters to the finish, and it's steep, and it's hard, but you're almost done. So just do what you can, and right here, you're, you're all set. It's a great climb. There's some awesome views at the end, and there's water there. If you're training, you can fill up for water, or even go in and get a Coke at the, um, the ranger station there. But, you know, it's an awesome climb, and I love it. I hope you had a fun time watching this, and I hope that you get more out of your ride the next time you go out there. So that's it for this video. I hope that some of that was useful and interesting to you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.